Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Journeyman Football Manager with Zebu Nation and it's finally here our season in the sun has finally begun this is season 4 of the Journeyman Football Manager and we've done it we've made it to the Premier League we've got the Wolves promoted this is uh, something I've never done before I've never got a team promoted into the Premier League never tried that hard honestly but um yeah so it's going to be something new something exciting for me to try and build a team and you know stay up in the premier league and use those financial gains that you get it's pretty amazing the difference in finances between one league and the other it's uh you know a whole different world we're operating in right now but uh you know this is our pre-season spectacular but you know what there were some off-season things especially when it comes to the journeyman part of this save in that we did get a couple of job offers now I applied for these jobs just like you should do as a good journeyman coach but I didn't get any of them any of them uh, mainly I think you know I didn't I didn't answer all the questions in a way that would uh, you know make sure that you get the job I answered the questions a little more truthfully because you know I've got a secure job here at the Wolves and I thought well I don't necessarily need these jobs if they want to give them me these jobs to me I'll take them but I'm not gonna like you know get down on my knees and beg for these jobs so there were about three or four jobs including FC Dallas over in MLS you know I took that that probably would have been a step down it definitely would have been a step down from the Premier League but, you know, it is FC Dallas. I got a little bit of history there with FC Dallas, so I thought I'd give them an interview and see what's what. And the biggest team that came through and, and gave me an interview was Seville over in the Spanish Premier League. I believe they were a four and a half or three and a half star, maybe four and a half star continental um, team. Uh, what do they call it? Reputation. Continental reputation team. So they're a pretty big team, pretty well-known team, and we I thought we interviewed well with them, but uh, then we ended up not getting that job. So uh, the chairman of the Wolves came through and said, look, I see you're getting all these job interviews. Why don't you sign a new contract here? So that's exactly what we did. We can go to the home and look at our new contract. It's a pretty good pay raise, $2 million a season. That's, uh, I think, a million and a half more than we were making I think we we're only making about 500,000 uh, when we were managing in the championship so this is a, a good pay rate good pay raise it expires in 2023 so it's another four years onto the contract so that's really good basically all we have to do is avoid relegation and uh, you know that's that's all they want from us just don't get relegated so I think we can achieve that and uh, we can at the very least stay here at the Wolves and build something here. It's not really the journeyman style of doing things, but, you know, sometimes life... Uh, I was going to say some anecdote, but then, I don't know, life hands you chocolate cake, and sometimes you just got to eat the chocolate cake rather than, I don't know, trade it in for something else. Whatever, that doesn't make any sense, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to eat some chocolate cake here. And I guess since this is the preseason spectacular, we will uh, go through the checklist and kind of talk about some of the things that happened during the preseason and the offseason. So let's first off start with what can be kind of interesting here in the offseason. I think most of the time it's kind of dull. But uh, finances, what happens to the finances in the offseason? And this has been a wild ride of, in terms of finances. Uh, the chairman put in a little bit of money. To help with operating costs, he increased the payroll budget, as you can see on the right-hand side here, to $49 million. So that was a pretty good increase. And then he gave us a pretty substantial um, transfer budget to which we added to, and then we blew it all on transfers. So we'll see what's up with that. Um, but the thing is, we got now money rolling in you can look here the tv revenue we've already earned nine million dollars in tv revenue season ticket sales are already up to seven million dollars you know so it's just uh it's a different marketplace where we're i think 
They said we're going to make $117 million this season in the Premier League. You know, over the course of the season, we'll get $117 million from TV rights and ad revenues and all that stuff. So it's going to be just, I think, financially very good for the club. We're going to start seeing these trends go up and up. Right now they're going down because we just finished the offseason and the preseason. Um, sponsorships here. We're looking pretty good. We got a new five-year deal uh, for our general sponsorship. That's not really a lot of money, 335000 So that hopefully will... Uh... Okay, so that ends in 2022. So hopefully we can get a better deal in 2022. But we also did get, for our main kit, we got a $1.5 million. So it's not a lot of sponsorship deals. Hopefully those can improve. And, uh, you know, over the course of the next few seasons, we'll get even more revenue from that um, debts and loans we're debt free that's kind of how i like to run the team i don't like to rack up too much debt what is f f p hmm i don't know uh loss for periods whatever salaries you can see our salaries are going up pretty good our expenditures are going way up Income is kind of a weird, interesting heat graph it's going down at the moment, but it'll start. It should steadily rise and outpace our expenses as the years as the year goes on. All right, so that's finances. I think we're looking good right now. We're a little, we're a little shaky, but uh, you know, I think everything will work out just fine. Board wise, job security is very, very secure. Sixty-two percent. That's pretty good at the beginning of the season. And, and like I said, all they want for us to do is not get promoted or not get promoted, not get uh, relegated. I always want to say demoted. I don't, why is it? Prom why isn't it promotion and demotion? Maybe relegation just sounds better. I don't know. Technical term, I suppose. But anyway, we're going to try to avoid all of that stuff. And the board has confidence we can do such uh, we haven't played much competition matches. Club stature, they're okay with that, 61%. Transfers, they're okay with our transfers. Okay with club finances. Happy with squad harmony. Kind of pretty much like they were last season. Club issues, our club stature is still one of the top issues, and it's okay. Payroll and budget, another issue. 53%, that's still positive. You know, hopefully we can see that climb as we get more money. But this has taken a huge jump for us, 57% job value, thanks to that massive increase in salary. We're now a little bit more difficult to fire. We're still not very difficult to fire, but still, you know, a little bit more difficult to fire. So that's good. And then our one club philosophy is developing players using the club's youth system. Now, I kind of planned on doing that this season, but maybe the first season in the Premier League isn't the best time to do that. So... I think we'll hold off on that. We've got some very good young prospects, and we're going to start bringing them into the first team slowly, but surely, I think. So, yeah, that's it for the board. Everything's happy and joyful there. Club-wise, stature. Stature has improved three and a half stars now. Now that we're in the Premier League, now that we're getting on television and all this stuff, the Wolves' name is starting to come back. We sold a ton of season tickets um, I think we've got more season tickets this season than was our average attendance last season. So we're looking very good there. Hopefully attendance can top out this season and we can look to expand the stadium for future seasons. Uh, facility wise, we've done some improvement. We now have excellent youth facilities, excellent training facilities. Our youth level is level two at the moment. We're working on level one. So hopefully come this season or next season we'll get some outstanding young youth recruits and we'll be able to build the team that way and, and stop spending all this money but uh you know that's for the future so i think the future is looking good and looking bright for everybody at the wolves now speaking of players and you know comings and goings it's time for the transfers that's right it's the big the big deal every single off season every single coach loves to go through their transfers and i am no different so let's take a look at our transfer history first off let's look at who who left and 
this year was kind of a kind of a reaping in terms of getting rid of players, you know, get rid of the wheat and the chaff and all that kind of stuff. And and we had to do a little bit of that so that we could get ready to plow the more fertile fields of the Premier League. And so, you know, with that theme in mind, you can look at some of the some of the good players we had to get rid of, some of the players who were still use, youthful, youthful, useful, but, you know, maybe we, we could get some value out of them and they weren't really going to play that much. So this is like the wheat part that we're getting rid of. Uh, Romain Saiz, our defensive midfielder, this was a done deal last season. The chairman sold this guy for $10 million. Nothing we could do about that, so that was fine. Jonas Groner, one of our backup central defenders, got a million and a half for him. Matuchik, you know, sort of a, a regular face at the club for a while. Got 300000 out of him. He's getting older, just about 30 years old now. Yep, 30 years old. Polish, sent him back home, so that's fine. Robert Hunt, a guy who, you know, was a versatile reserve for us. Still had some life left in him, but... He just wasn't going to play much this season other than, you know, emergency kind of situations. So we got a little value out of him. And then the chaff, we got rid of just a bunch of guys who were marginal reserves in the championship. And they just were not going to play at all in the Premier League. So get rid of them on a free transfer. Let their contracts run out. Uh, Andy Lonergan is one of those names you would know because he played a lot of games in goal for us last season. But he's 30-something years old. How old is he? 35. You know, time to let him go and, and get some playing time someplace else for the last couple of years of his of his career. No need, no need for him to sit on the bench for us for the last year or so. Mike Mikal Zero, or Zyro, however you pronounce this name. I like calling him Mr. Zero. Um, he's a guy we should have used more. 26 years old. He's a decent player. There's nothing wrong with him. It's just he was a winger. And we committed to playing the diamond formation last season. So we really had no room for this guy. And, you know, we just sort of mercifully let his contract run out. Let him go play somewhere else. And then we had to get rid of a few seeds as well. Some young players who had the potential to grow into something. But maybe it wasn't going to be something that uh, was going to be too useful for us. So I figured if we can get some money for some of these guys... Let's do that and clear room for what should be even better recruits in the future. Uh, Sylvain Deslandes, a French youngster, 22 years old, a defender. Nothing wrong with this guy. He's a pretty decent player, but we could never get a work permit for him. So just get some money out of him, let him go play in France or wherever, any place where he could get a work permit. And play um, Joshua Hessen, Hiram Boateng played a little bit for us last season, but just not enough. We let him go for you know between three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars. And then the big loss, sort of the big signing, was Tom Mayer, the American striker, twenty years old. This guy's got a lot of potential. I like this guy. I didn't want to get rid of him, but we couldn't get a work permit for him, and I don't think we we're going to get one anytime soon. Um, he had six under 20 caps. Maybe he could have made the U.S. Olympic team, and that could have helped us get a work permit for him. But I just, I just didn't want to wait around for the guy, you know. So we got a, we got an offer for him, half a million, up to maybe three quarters of a million. Let him go. Let him go. That's fine. All right. So those are the guys we let go. We let go a bunch of people, cleared room. You know, there's still, still a bunch of people that we need. I think to get rid of but for now we can keep them on the team it's not a big deal but we did have some incoming players and we had a huge transfer budget and I didn't want to use it honestly at the beginning of the season I was thinking you know what I'm just not going to use the transfer budget I'm going to go with who I've got see if our young players can grow and then mid-season if we're in trouble we'll spend the money but I couldn't resist myself I couldn't stop buying players so I did, and that's what happened. So first off, we got a pretty good deal from Arsenal for Ben Sheaf, a, a versatile guy who can play central defender, can play midfield, defensive midfielder, can play a little bit of everything. Got him for $600,000. That's chump change these days. But he's just a good all-around player. There's nothing spectacular about this guy. His technicals are, or his mentals are very good. He's got great determination, which is what 
we've been building this team, a very determined team, so he fits right in. And uh, he's just a you know a versatile reserve type player who's you know a marginal marginal starter even for this team. So he's okay. Um, and then we got a little wacky. Uh, we bought back Courtney House, who was one of our top young players for the Wolves. Um, our chairman sold him out from underneath us two well one and a half seasons ago. He's continued to improve, continued to get better. So you know what? We bought him back, and we overpaid for him a little bit, 16 million bucks. But what was interesting is due to a sort of a quirk, we got a refund on this guy because we had a 30% sell-on clause when we sold this guy last year. So we basically got a 30% refund on Courtney House. So that helped Help take the sting out of the purchase a little bit, but we spent you know a good deal of our transfer money on this guy, so we need we're going to need him to perform and need him to play for us very well. And then the big signing this season, the most important signing, was we got uh, Sim Simone Simon Minolet from Liverpool for ten and a half million. Again, we overpaid a little bit for this guy. He's only valued at seven and a half million. But, you know, he's got 18 reflexes, 16 agility. His other stats are very, very good. Six foot four. He's 31 years old, which is kind of old, but not too old for a goalkeeper. So, um, yeah, we needed an improvement at goal. That was our number one number one need going into the offseason. And uh, Minole fits that bill. I've worked with this guy before in one of my previous saves, and he's a fine goalkeeper. No, no problems there. Um, and then we picked up Tommy Smith from Huddersfield, a guy maybe we got a little bit of a good deal on him. I don't know. He's valued at 9.25. We got him for 7.75, so I guess that's a good deal. I don't know. But um, we also had a little bit of a need at right back, right fullback, you know, because we lost some players uh, last season. And I don't know that I wanted to go with Marshall again this season at the at the right defender because I thought maybe we were going to play more wide formation so we're going to need Marshall up top to play a winger but anyway I went out and got this guy Tommy Smith he, he's pretty good he, you know there's nothing great about him physically he's he's pretty good he's probably our best fullback physically mentally very strong in all areas leadership very good technically he's okay he's not He's not going to blow the world away or anything like that. But 13 crossing, 13 dribbling, that's that's very respectable for a fullback. So I think this guy can come in and be a very, very solid contributor for us. And if all else fails, we'll still have Marshall there as a backup. Uh, we'll see how Marshall deals with being a backup. We might have to deal him away. But anyway, Tommy Smith should be a good player for us. And then the final player we picked up was Tom Walker. Um, a midfielder, he can play winger, play left attacking midfielder. So he's got some versatility to him. Nothing real special about this guy. Again, very determined. We've got a very determined squad, and he fits right in. But other than that, he's pretty average. We got him on a free transfer, so it's just a depth guy, honestly. So there we go. There's our transfers. And now, finally, I think we can... Um, Look at our schedule, look at our team, look at how, how we've done in the offseason. So let's do that. And here is our offseason schedule. We played some interesting players, some teams, including Liverpool. Had a 1-1 draw to Liverpool. Um, we had sort of a really bad 2-1 defeat to Krasnodar of the Russian Premier Division. Um, we played, you know, we played off off and on in terms of our starters. We played backup starter, backup starter, backup starter, backup starter. So, you know, we switched off fully rotated squads. And that was one of our fully rotated sides that lost at home. I was not happy about that. But for the rest, we've done pretty good, especially defensively. Look at this four straight shutouts versus some, you know, uh, honestly some lesser competition. But still, if you can keep, if you can dominate lesser competition, it, it, Builds momentum, in my opinion, and it helps you uh, helps your players grow and feel good about themselves for when you have a real challenge. And we've got a real challenge coming up with our second to last preseason game. It's a televised game versus Juventus. 
who is one of the um, one of the teams that always make it into like Champions League and Euros and all that kind of stuff. They're from the uh, first division in Italy. Um, they win this all the time. They win this league all the time. You look at that: thirty-three championships, two European Champions Cups. You know they've got silverware um, coming out of their ears. Honestly, so this is a team that it's a big deal when you play a team like this. This is the kind of team that can get you ready, not just for the Premier League, but maybe for what comes after that if you win a a, a cup and make it into some of the larger competitions. So this should be a very interesting match, a very uh, good good way to see where we're at. You know, how do we stack up against a team like Juventus? And uh, yeah, should be fun, should be entertaining. Now let's look at our team and look at who we're playing. So here we are. Got the diamond formation. Might as well go with it. Um, we will play some more wide formations this year. Now we're not going to play exclusively diamond, at least for the first half of the season. If we don't, if we run into some trouble, you know, we're going back to the diamond. There's no doubt about that. That's our bread and butter. But it, we're going to, you know, we have some players that we need to play. Some young players who play out on the wing. We need to get them playing time and playing a wide formation is the only way to do it. So we're going to try to do it this season. And in any event, um, I don't know where I was going with that thought. But this is what we're going to play against Juventus. Forget all that that I just said. This is the formation we're going with. And here's the lineup, the roster. Our new man in goal, uh, Simon Minole, is going to play there. Everybody's looking healthy. Everybody's looking uh, fit. You know, it was a very good offseason. We played a lot of games. We went over to Austria this year, and I think that's that's where the real Wolves went this offseason was Austria as well. Um, you know, they try to make us go to Portugal every year for whatever reason. So I decided to change it up a little bit, and, uh, you know, I saw some pictures from the Wolves over there in Austria, and things look very beautiful in the mountains and all that stuff, so I figured... I'd take my team over there, too, and see what it's all about. And, uh, you know, it was fun. It was good times. But anyway, again, I don't know where I was going with that. Just got off on a tangent there. So let's get back to the lineup. Got our new our new players, Minole in goal, Tommy Smith at the right fullback, old standby Garbutt still looking strong at the left fullback. Um, now we got to decide on central defense. We've got a few, unfortunately... We've got, well, fortunately or unfortunately, I don't know how to put that. We have several players who are starter quality. Now, Alfie Mawson, 25 years old, He, he his, um, his contract says he's a rotational player. So we're not going to start him. We are going to start Courtney House. Um, but maybe not this game because right now, we're thin at left back. We have our only reserve left back, Scott Tanser, is injured. He's out for a little while. He's out for another week. So we kind of need Courtney House as our reserve left back. So you know what? We're going to keep him in there. We're going to keep Alfie Malson in there as the central defender. Is he a defensive back? Yeah, he is. a. All right. Whatever. He and our captain, Danny Bath, are going to man the the defensive backfield then we're moving Connor Cody down to ball winning midfielder now he may be supplanted a little later in the season by one of our youngsters but for now he's our best option after uh, Saiz was transferred so we're going to keep him at the uh, defensive midfielder ball winning midfielder that's he's he's comfortable there there's no problem there and then um, we've got an open position here at right central midfield it's between Ben Sheaf and Roman Maycheck. Maycheck is still kind of learning the position. He's only one and a half star there at the moment, but he's got a lot more potential than Sheaf. And right now he's a little bit more more physically fit. So we're going to play him there at the, uh, not the ball winning. He's going to be the central midfield and attack. So he's got a little bit of an interesting position there. McGinn is back at the box-to-box -box midfielder, as is Jamie Walker, Simone Gantz, Demetrius Diamantakos at the strikers. So no change there at the top of our rotation, or the top of our lineup, I should say. And then we've got a lot of familiar names on the bench. Uh, 
some of our youngsters are going to be more in the rotation this year. Mason Blake at goal, Carl Hornshaw at right fullback, Keith Blake at defensive midfielder. So we got the Blake brothers should be holding down our defense in years to come, but for now they're going to be reserves. Um, Colin McGregor is still there. He's dropped a little bit in terms of potential. He's only a three-star dude, but he's a very capable guy coming off the bench in rotation. Ben Marshall is still here. Noah Dico, uh, Zalalem, Ikem. So a lot of familiar names from last season. Now the place that we're real thin is striker. We only have four strikers on the roster, and currently one of them is hurt. Um, where did my man go? Mm. Oh, there he is. Uh, Ekpom is in the wrong spot. Uh, Ekpom is a little injured, so he's probably not going to play today. You know, he's only 90% fit. He's just coming off an injury, so, you know, I'll try to avoid using him if possible. We got Deco on the bench, so that's no problem. We're also thin at at defense. Central defense, we only have Three central defenders at the moment. Ebanks Landell still walking off that injury from last season. Still another three months to go on his recovery time. So we might not play this guy much at all. Bailey Wright also injured for another few weeks. So we've taken some hits at central defense. And, uh, you know, we might have to call up some youngsters uh, if things get any worse. So with all that said and or done, let's Submit the team, and let's play this match against Juventus. It's a lot of build-up this season. I'm going to take a drink there, but that's what these preseason spectaculars are all about. It's all about showing you how the team has changed and improved over the offseason. Juventus going a little bit defensive here with the 4-4-1-1. Four, four, one, one. Uh, with Dybala up front. All right, that's fine. We've got, of course, our diamond formation. Apply advice to the team. We're going to close down on their top players here and then close down on their wingers just in case. We especially want to close down on Piaka over here on the right-hand side. going to definitely keep an eye on that feller. There we go. We're going to see pep talk passionately. Show everyone what you can do. Uh, Connor Cody, like that. All right, instructions. I mean, we're going to stick to what we stick to. That's the counter, disciplined. Uh, we're going to play our positions, play our formation, and see if they can break us down. All righty then. This is what I want to see this season. I want to see Molyneux packed and stacked to the rafters every single game. We're in the Premier League. The fans should be coming out after our championship season. And, uh, you know, help us build the club. That's what supporters should do, right? They don't just come and watch the games. They support the team. And uh, they want to see it grow and become one of the best in the league, if not in the world. Here's Walker now getting forward to Diamantacos. Our first attack of the game. Can he cross it? He doesn't need to cross it. He just fires it straight at the goalkeeper. Nice save uh, on the part of the goalkeeper. But there we are. We get, we get first attack. It was a pretty good one. Nice shot by Diamantacos. So I think our strikers are still going to, maybe they're not going to be as dominant as they were in the championship, but I think they should still be able to compete at this level. Here's Walker with a free kick. Bounces right back to him. Looks like Juventus has a bit of an injured player there. Uh, as we try to resettle the offense, Bath has it. I'd like Bath to get back on defense. McGinn sends it forward to Diamantacos. He beats his man, and then he beats the goalkeeper. Listen to that crowd cheer for our first big goal of the season. A superb assist. That's true. McGinn goes around a man, chips it forward. The defender tries to make a tackle and just falls down. And Diamantacos, the defensive forward, showing his offensive ability there, gets the goal. Nice Nice way to start the match. Seven minutes in. We've already got a goal up. And here we go. There's Piaka. we got to keep an eye on him. Um, I'd like to see how our new, new fullback plays out there on the right-hand side. See if he can keep, uh, keep the ball in front of him. Here's Pereira. That 
That got by our defense right there. Not happy about that. That was some bad, some bad play on the part of our central defenders. Um, who's ever playing on the left side? I believe that's Danny Bath. Sort of got a little overzealous, missed a header, and that allowed that allowed Juventus to even up the score. Not happy about that. Minolay could not come up with the big save. Uh, Machik has po poss possibly suffered a damaged foot. Should be able to nurse him through the rest of the match. Um, I guess we'll play him till halftime, take him out. No need to play him the whole match in on, a, on a friendly. Here's another free kick from Walker. Bounces straight back to him again. He gets the ball stolen by Capese. Downfield. Here's Dybala on the run. Beating our central defense. And then beats the goalkeeper easily. This is not what we wanted. Dybala just sort of makes a mockery of our defense there. Not happy about that. We had two men back. Two men in position, and he just goes right past them, right around them, and then our goalkeeper just flops. Come on, buddy. We're paying you a lot of money. Supposed to have 18 reflexes. Didn't look like it right there. You know, that's the thing about this team is we're on a knife edge. If we start looking like we're not going to do anything except for, you know, avoid relegation... Then we might start selling off players. We might start playing youngsters. Here's Gantz over the top. Sends sort of a uh, weak shot. The goalkeeper handles that easily. But yeah, we've got some good young prospects on the bench. So if we start looking like we're not going to be in the playoff mix or in the top half or anything like that, then we might as well just play the youngsters. And that's something I kind of struggled with this offseason is do I, since expect expectations are so low do I play the youngsters and not spend all my transfer money but then I went a little crazy here's Walker Walker ties the score up with a nice pass over the top I believe it was Diamantacos with the assist there that was an excellent play while I was talking about other situations so here it is here's Diamantacos yep just lofts it up Walker getting forward Walker is such an outstanding weapon to have in the central midfield. He gets forward so well, and uh, I guess he's attacking midfielder, but still, he ties it up 2-2 at halftime. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. We're definitely hanging with this team, no problem. Keep going out there. Your hard work is blah 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 And, uh, okay, we need to sub out Maycheck. You know, uh, his rating's not great. It's not bad. But if he's got an injury, there's no need to keep him in there when we have other players who could play just as well. We'll bring in Sheaf. That should be fine. All right, start the second half. Um, I do want to change Sheaf's position a little bit here. Put him to the ball-winning midfield in support. All right, confirm that. All right, so here we go. Juventus gets the ball to start the second half. Piaka out wide. Let's uh, cover him up. There we go. There's Garbutt. He's now going to go against Garbutt. No, I guess he always had to go against Garbutt. Anyway, Cody gets the steal, and we're off to the races. Here we are. Sheaf now, our, our substitute, gets it out wide to the new man, Smith. Centers to Walker. McGinn is open. He gets the ball. McGinn surveys the field, and he gets a... Uh, deflection out of touch for a corner kick so we're putting the pressure on them with just our basic counter attack so that's good to see Garbutt has a yellow card he's going to take the corner kick goalkeeper leaps high to grab it out of the air um I kind of forgot what I was talking about oh yeah youngsters you know we might play more youngsters this season if we're out of the out of the running for anything honestly so I'm not, I've held off loaning out some of our better young players just in case that happens. There's Minolay finally with a stop. Uh, paid $10 million for one stop. Good job. Um, so yeah, that's definitely a possibility this season. And we'll see how that plays out. All right, 60 minutes is just about on. Might be time to make some substitutions. Garbutt's got a yellow card. I think Danny Bath might be a little bit tired out there. 
See who else we can get in the game. Walker to McGinn. Back to Sheaf. Playing a bit of the triangle here. Walker gets it forward. Gantz is free. Gantz takes a shot off the side of the post. And it'll be a goal kick for Juventus. All right, we've reached the 60-minute mark. Let's get Garbutt out of there. So this is why we needed to keep Kenny House on the bench because we got no other left backs at the moment. And he, he's a good, versatile guy. He can play wing back, full back, defensive full back. You know, no problems with Kenny House. He's also a very good central defender. So he, you know, we paid a lot of money for him. But he's he's more than just a one-trick pony. He's got some versatility to him, and, and we can play him at a couple of different positions. So I think that's it's okay when you're spending money to spend money on a guy who who can play a lot of positions. Now the other thing we got to look at here is our central defense is not looking good. Um, Mawson with a 6.4 rating, and Danny Bath right behind there, right above that with a 6.5 rating. Not good for either of these gentlemen. So who do we take out? We've got Kyle McFadden on the bench. The 32-year-old, he has not played much at all um, in the two seasons that he's been with us. You know, he's still a pretty decent player. He's still got pretty good physicals for an older guy. Um, I think he can still be useful for us. He's sort of rumbling that he wants to leave. And who can blame him, I guess. So we'll take out Mawson, bring in McFadden. Central defender. All right. Hopefully that shakes up our defense a little bit and we can play a little better. Um, I don't know about that, but we'll see. We'll see. All right. Here's a header into the box. Oh, barely tapped wide by Minolay. That had a chance of going off the crossbar. Here's Gantz now starting the counterattack. Is he going to get it forward or is he going to run it? He looks like he's running it himself. No, he passes off to Diamantakos. Human Tacos double, double covered and dispossessed. But there's House moving forward way up the field to get the steal. To Sheaf, to Smith, back to Sheaf, to Walker now. Walker gets dispossessed. Uh, I'm not happy about that, but our defense wins it back. Maybe, yep, there's Connor Cody winning the ball at midfield. That's what he's supposed to do. Here's Sheaf now with the free kick. Oof. Odero, the goalkeeper, has to make a diving save off that free kick. That was a nice... Nice free kick by Sheaf. Uh, Danny Bath still rocking the 6.4 rating. Simone Gantz not much better. Walker's got an 8.3 rating, but he's a little tired. We might get him out of there. There's House winning the ball up to Diamantakos, but he gets dispossessed. Bonucci out wide to Piaka. He's going up against the defender again. He goes right past him. He has to get double teamed. House and McGinn both dispossess him. So it's good that we're focusing on that guy. He seems very important to their offense. House is now getting involved to Sheaf, our other substitute. So our substitutes are getting involved. That's good. Gantz back out wide to House. Now House, his forte isn't really getting forward, but he can get forward in a pinch. And there's Sheaf. Kind of a dainty little shot, but Ardero just has to steer it out of touch. I think this team's got some good players. I think we got some depth. We don't have any superstars. I don't think we have anybody who's going to, like, you know, scare the other team. So, I don't know. Maybe we should have saved our transfer budget for somebody like that. You know, somebody that we could spend... Um, 20 or 30 million dollars on to bring him in and make a huge difference in our team but I don't know I don't know who that would be or if they'd be available it's just not I'm not familiar enough with the players you know so I have to rely on my scouting and to see who's who I mean I'm, I'm definitely not going to be able to go out and get any you know Ronaldo or Messi or anybody like that somebody I might know um Honestly, I haven't even scouted those guys. I should probably scout those guys and see just what, what their stats look like. Like, what do the top stats look like compared to my guys? I think that's something I should look at now that I'm in the Premier League. Because before, I never really looked at those guys because there was no point. You know, there's no way I was ever going to get one of those guys to come to my teams in the MLS or in the champion in the championship or whatever. 
So there's no point in looking at those guys. But now that I'm in the Premier League, there might be a point to looking at those guys. Maybe I can get them when they're older, you know. Oh, that was a good save by Smith on the back line there. Um, you know, so I should I should see and at least compare them to see what, what level am I trying to get to. You know, if I start getting to um, Euros or to anything like that, Champions League, I'm going to have to compete with those guys. And, um, you know, I don't know that I can at this point. I'm definitely sure I can't, but you never know. You never know. All right, Walker is tired, 62%. Let's bring in... I guess we'll bring in Marshall. That's the good. The, the other good thing about Marshall is he can play a lot of places. He can play any of the advanced midfielder places, and he can also play uh, fullback. So, again, versatile dude. It's good to have on your team. He hasn't played much this off season, so that's not great. But we'll play him in the final preseason match. Get him a little bit of fitness. And then he'll maybe have to get some fitness in the under-23s or something like that. Here's House now trying to restart the offense after the free kick. Drops it back to Bath. He really needs to get back and not get dispossessed. Good man gets it to Sheaf. Again to Marshall. Marshall gets dispossessed. I don't like that. I don't like how easily my advanced midfielders are getting dispossessed. Not happy about that. Smith back to Sheaf to McGinn. Again forward to Diamantacos. Has a little bit of space. He just fires it. That was a nice, powerful shot, but it went went over the top and not really that effective. Uh, let's see. Anybody else we need to get out of there? Maybe get Gantz out of there. Ah, there's, this is just about time. So we're going to end up with a 2-2 draw unless we score something miraculous right here. Diamantacos? Nope. That should be time, and there it is. So that's not terrible. 2-2 draw against Juventus. Um, you know, it shows we can at least com compete with these guys. And that's uh, kind of all we're looking for at this point. So our two big preseason matches versus Liverpool and Juventus, they both end up in draws. I don't know how to feel about that, I guess. Not necessarily encouraged, but also not necessarily discouraged. Um... So yeah, I, I guess the season is still yet yet to be determined in terms of what our expectations should be. Now, board-wise, our expectations are low. It's just don't get demoted. So we don't have that kind of pressure on us, but still, you know, we want to try to do as, as well as possible. And I, I don't like finishing anywhere lower than mid-table just for my own satisfaction. So we'll see if that can be where we finish, and uh, yeah, got a lot of a uh, lot of way to go before we get to that. But for now, let's. I mean, we have our one more friendly versus Telford. Don't no don't, don't need to show that after the Juventus match. Then we got to look at our schedule and see what will be our next match. Let's take a look at the schedule. What do we got here? We got the EFL Cup. Maybe we'll show that and get a, you know, we also have Man, Man United. That's a good game to show. Who else? Who else? West Ham, that's one of our rivals, I guess. I mean, not like a real rival, but there are, you know, the guy who the guys who came up with us into this league and beat us last season. So I, I got a little bit of hard feelings towards them. But yeah, anyway... We'll figure that out and come back with another game um, next time. So until then, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.